Okay, so if you follow my show, you know that I talk a lot about regime change in all these various countries, that the U.S. has a history of going around the world trying to affect regime change using a variety of tactics, oftentimes covert. So we often find that the U.S. government, you know, CIA or whoever it might be, goes in to a country and uses destabilization tactics. The point is to overthrow the brutal dictator, right? So we've seen this time and time again. We saw the Arab Spring um, in 2011 when the Arab Spring swept through the Middle East. Our government took advantage of this and in, went into Libya, caused, you know, really inflamed the uprisings and caused the toppling of Gaddafi. Uh, we saw this in Syria, really inflamed the protests that were going on in Syria getting in there, really, you know, meddling and meddling and to the point where it resulted, it broke out in a civil war in Syria. We see the same tactics going on in Venezuela against Maduro. There might be people that rise up, they're angry, they're mad. Uh, and then our covert operations go in and inflame it even more and, and try to create violence and chaos. And then Maduro comes in and has to stamp it out. And they say, brutal dictator, brutal dictator. You know, with Assad, it was, he gasses his own people. Look at him. Look what he does to stop his own people. And it's like, they're in a civil war. I mean, civil war means it's against your own people. So yeah, you're going to be doing atrocious things against your own people. That's what civil war is. And then we hear, you know, same thing. Gaddafi was a brutal dictator. Um, Saddam Hussein, now that was more overt, not covert. We marched our asses right into Iraq and took out Saddam Hussein. We do covert uh, operations in Iran, trying to destabilize Iran. They've got many protests rising up and we see the outbreaks of violence and suddenly, you know, the, the Iranian military or police crack down. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, they're, you know, the Ayatollah is brutal. The, you know, the government of Iran is brutal. China has recently been accusing us of doing the same thing in Hong Kong. There was an, a, a genuine uprising in Hong Kong, people fe fearing the uh, authoritarianism of the Chinese government, of a, of a communist dictatorship, you know, in their mind or lack of freedoms in some way if they go under full, China's con full Chinese control. And, um, and now, and then it results in these, you know, endless protests, violence, and the Chinese government points the finger at the U.S. and says, Hey, you know, um, uh, the U.S. is uh, meddling in our in our country, and they're trying to destabilize us in order to, you know, affect some kind of regime change. And we've seen this time and time again. And the strategy is always the same, unless it's an overt marching in, going to war, like we did in Iraq. What we've seen around the country is are these covert operations over and over and over again. And it's the same playbook. It's nothing new. It's take hold of a genuine protest and uprising, uh, make it get in there and, and agitate, 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 make it worse and make the, you know, get, get violence going. Then the government will have to come in with military force, crack down. And then we get to point the finger at the government and say, you're brutal dictators. You deserve to be ousted. Right. Whether they, the people overthrow, you know, the ideally the best case scenario for our, our covert operations is to get uh, their own people to overthrow their own government. It's to get them agitated and agitated and agitated and for the government to come and, and slam down, you know, crash down on them to the point where they overthrow their own. That's best case scenario. Now, sometimes you can't really do that. So the people get agitated, people get agitated. Then there's this, uh, you know, uh, the government comes in, they clamp down, we can deem them brutal dictators. And then maybe we can talk our bleeding hearts over here in America to a humanitarian mission of going in and toppling the brutal dictator for humanitarian reasons. We did that in Syria. So, you know, in, in Venezuela, we haven't gotten to that point, but we try, you know, we do these uprisings, we do these uprisings. And then what we try to do in that front was we, we did try, Trump tried with uh, Bolton, right, to get the generals, the military, the Venezuelan military to turn on Maduro, which they did not. So we see this time and time again happening all throughout the world. And always the strategy is the same, rise up, agitate, brutal dictator topple. So, you know, 
I kind of wonder, we, many of us progressives are able to spot this everywhere in the world, but we seem to have a hard time spotting it if it's happening possibly right under our noses. And this is something I've been wondering about. Now, I don't have any proof of this. I'm just speculating, but this is casual Kim rant day. So I'm just speculating. But my speculation is it's possible that there is an operation to take these peaceful protests. Because, you know, in all of these countries that I just mentioned, Hong Kong, um, Syria, Libya, uh, Venezuela, you know, these uprisings are real. The people have a, re Iran, the people have a, a legitimate reason for rising up and protesting. The Arab Spring was real. Um, the, the, in Iran, people are genuinely wanting less of a religious government. You know, there is this, there are these uprisings. They're genuine. We see protests in this, we, we see protests all the time in this country. We saw the Women's March after Trump. You know, we protest a lot. Protesting is a natural thing we do in democracies. So these protests, I believe, were legitimate and real when these protests and uprisings happened. But when they turn aggressive and when there's there, it's looting and fires and property damage and even death, that is where you kind of have to stop and ask what is really going on here. And it could go one of two ways when I look at the current uprisings that have been going on all around this country. One is it could very well be that people are very angry because you know what? When people are broke, people are mad. And we do see an uptick in violence when we see an, uh, when poverty goes up, poverty goes up, uh, desperation goes up. People feel like they don't have anything to lose. Violence goes up. That's pretty normal. That very well could be what it is. It's just people are pissed and they're looking for a way to take it out on the man. And that very well might be what we're seeing. But there is a possibility that even though that might even be, and it could be both, it could be both, that that is what's happening. There's a possibility that there's some covert operations happening to agitate and agitate and agitate in order to get the Trump administration to send in the federal troops, you know, or federal uh, law enforcement, clamp down, gas and kidnap and do all of these strategies that they're trained to do that these covert operators know they're trained to do and might even be helping them do. And uh, in an attempt to then say, this here is a brutal dictator who needs to be ousted. Look, I have watched now for the last four years, the Democratic Party, people inside the Democratic establishment willing to go to great lengths to get rid of Donald Trump. Great lengths. They've gone very far in order to get rid of him from Russia gate. You know, they started off with stupid stuff, right? Like tax returns and stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen and Michael Avenatti, you know, and then they had all, you know, they had all oh, and Michael Flynn, they had all these Michaels. And then they kind of moved on and they started getting more aggressive and more, more aggressive when they saw that these smaller things weren't working, you know, he sleeps with porn stars, cheats on his wife, like nobody cared. So they kept going harder at him. And, and then it turns into Russia, right? Oh, well, Okay, maybe you don't care about Stormy Daniels, but you'll care about Putin. You'll care about the fact he's a Manchurian candidate. And then, you know, oh, now it's Ukraine and now we got to impeach, right? So it's it's escalated and escalated and escalated. I don't put anything past them at this point. I believe I said right after the impeachment or during the impeachment, I said, God, this scares me because I know it's not going to go through. And then I don't know what's next. I don't know what they're going to try to come up with next in order to get rid of this guy, but they're going to great lengths and it's pretty scary. So, you know, there's a lot of theories as to what they could be doing right now in order to um, make things really bad in this country, in order to oust Donald Trump, because they know that a sitting president is not likely to be reelected when Americans are miserable. I think it's very possible that there are some covert agitators that are in with the in on the mix of people causing violence and harm. Because a lot of the people in Portland, when they're interviewed, say that during the day, the protests seem peaceful, but then at night they change. And at night, when you're under the cover of darkness, you know, things seem to shift and then it becomes more, you know, aggressive and people are uh, looting and smashing things. And, and so, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past knowing what our country has done time and time again, it, all around the world, 
it would make sense to me if the countries, you know, if there are people inside doing it again in our own country who um, are uh, uh, doing it and, and maybe then they're also not just part of the agitators, but they're also maybe part of the fed um, the, the group that's then clamping down and they're doing it in order to make Trump look really bad, which he doesn't need help. <laughs> he doesn't need any help looking bad guys. But I mean, I guess it does help, right? Because there's a real chance now he's going to lose to Joe Biden because none of us are okay with the gassing of peaceful protesters. None of us are okay with the kidnapping of peaceful protesters. None of us are okay with a wall of moms being gassed. That is not okay. Nobody's okay with him gassing protesters on his way to a photo shoot uh, at a church with a Bible. Nobody's okay with that. And they know nobody's okay with that. It's just something to kind of consider when I look at all these protests and I and I see what's been going on and uh, I and to how the establishment is just grinning. I mean, look, guys, they are happy about these protests. They're not. Look, if you know, my dad's theory when I told him about what I think is going on with um, maybe these the, the covert operations inside the protests and maybe inside the Fed, the federal uh, law enforcement kind of creating this narrative and this well, not narrative. I mean, it's really happening, but creating it and you know, escalating it. He thinks that, no, it's because it's the establishment wanting to curtail the left, that they don't like the left. And I, my point is the left is already contained. Bernie Sanders lost. There, there is no Medicare for all on the table, as we've noticed. They're, they're not, Joe Biden's not unveiling as part of his four plank plan today, anything for healthcare, really. Um, he gave some little like, oh, we're going to give some more money to caregivers at home. You know, if your loved one needs nursing care, we're going to help them out. You know, he kind of threw in a token little thing there. But what, you know, what we're, um, uh, the left is already contained, the establishment. One, they defeated Bernie Sanders. And now you've got everybody in the street, including progressives who are screaming more about racism and police and statues than Medicare for all and economic reforms. Nobody's marching or screaming about that. So they win. They already won. And the way you know that they're not in on that, they're uh, complacent in on this. That I believe they're in on this is because you're not seeing Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, MSNBC talking about these these radical leftist protesters. That would be the first thing they would do if they were in on it. If they were in on it, they'd be talking, you know, headline after headline after headline about, oh, these Bernie bros, look at what they're doing because they're mad that they lost. They're mad Joe Biden's the nominee. You know, they would really try to make the Bernie bros look really bad. And they're not. They're not because the establishment media is in on it. It's not about the Bernie bros. It's not about the progressive movement. It's not about progressive ideologies because that already got squashed. They got co-opted. They're now talking about racism. And now, you know, the establishment saying, you're right, we're in on this. See, we're progressive. See? Anytime they're not talking is the time you should be listening and figuring out why are they not talking? Why is the Washington Post remaining completely silent about what is going on around the country? Why are they not? Why is the only thing we're hearing is about brutal federal law enforcement? Because they want to say brutal dictator, brutal dictator, bad, brutal dictator needs to be ousted. If he wins and he's reelected, um, then they're probably going to use this as a way to get him out again. Is another way to impeach to say, well, we got to get him out because look at what this brutal dictator does. We can't have this. So those are that's just a theory. Again, it's just something that's made me think, made me wonder I cover this in every other country around the world. It's made me really stop to wonder about it might happen. It might be happening here in the United States.